Hi, it's Mark from TrainSpark, and in this video, we're taking a look at version 4.8 of LearnDash, which was released in August 2023. And what we're on here is the change log for LearnDash, which is available at learndash.com forward slash release hyphen notes. And this is where you'd want to go if you want to find out what is in any of the updates in LearnDash. So it will list them all here with the different versions. What we're looking at here is the new one, 4.8. So what we're going to do in this video is just look at the, some of the features. There are a few updates here and some bug fixes, but they're more sort of behind the scenes things that we won't necessarily notice. These are the features that are the things that have changed in this newer version and the bits that we want to focus on. So the first is this create quizzes using AI. So if you remember a couple of versions back in version 4.6, they re released an AI course builder, which just created like a, a lesson structure for a course based on an AI prompt. So you would type what you wanted your course to contain, and it would create a series of lessons with the topics that you might want to then populate. What they've now done is taken things a step further and added the ability to create quizzes using AI. And shortly we'll take a look at that. They've also added some other bits here, like a password reset success page to the uh, password reset process, and also video progression support for bunny.net. So there was previously video progression support for Vimeo and YouTube, I think, but they've added bunny.net as well. And what that is, is on certain Learn Dash lessons and topics, you can have a video on there and force people to watch the video in its entirety before they can continue the course. So they can't just keep skipping and, and miss a video out. They've actually got to watch it. And what you had before was YouTube and Vimeo where you could force the user to watch it all the way to the end and you know, then they'll be able to continue the course. Bunny.net is a similar sort of service to YouTube and Vimeo. It's a video hosting service and it's becoming more and more popular. Uh, so they've added support for that too. They've added this feature where you can extend people's access to courses. And we'll take a look at that shortly as well. And in a similar way to how they've set up selling of courses uh, and adding start and end dates to courses, they've now added these two groups as well, because you can actually buy access to LearnDash groups and access the courses that way too. So what we're going to do is have a look at all of these features, uh, mainly focusing on the AI quiz and these bits around extending courses and groups. And uh, we'll just chat through those. So let's have a look at what I would say is the most interesting one here, creating quizzes using AI. So I've got my Learn Dash platform here, and what I'm going to do is head to the dashboard, and under Learn Dash LMS, I'm going to head to Settings first. Now, if you haven't already set up your API access uh, you know, uh, for OpenAI, which you would use to um, integrate with this, you know, create AI-related content, this is how you do it. So if you head to settings, there's AI integrations here. And what you need is an OpenAI API key. So if you you might have already set this up for when you did the um, the course builder API, uh, AI course builder, sorry. Uh, but if you haven't, then this is where you go to do it. And what you basically want to do is create an account on platform.openai.com. And you do need to put, a credit card in here to actually use this, but I, I think you, you actually still get a, a certain amount of free tokens just to try it with as well. So if you register an account on platform.openai.com, you may find that you, uh, are, you have a, a certain number of credits already built in to be able to use this. But what you would do is head up into the top right here and then go to view API keys, which would bring you to this page. And then all you do is click create a new secret key and let's call this uh, quiz builder, for example, just something that you'll know uh, to refer to, and then create a secret key. 
and then you just copy it and I'm going to delete this at the end of this video as well so um, once we've copied it I'm just going to paste it in there and then click save and now that's saved our OpenAI key kind of links our learn dash profile with OpenAI which is what ChatGPT is, is based around it's the, the company that runs that so now we've got that set up what we can do is head to quizzes and then once you upgrade to version 4.8 you'll have this new button here which says create quiz from ai so i'm just going to click on that now and i'm going to choose the associated course so i'm just going to choose this one here healthy eating for healthy life you can choose a lesson and uh, i'll choose this ketogenic diet for weight loss here you can associate a topic but i don't think i've got any in there so i'm just going to leave that one blank and you can also associate this with an existing quiz or you can create your own so i'm just going to create one here myself so i'll just call this something like um building healthy eating habits and it says building healthy eating habits new quiz i'm just going to tick that now then we can choose what types of quiz we you know, type of quiz question we want to create here so um, you know we can choose single choice multiple choice all the different options i'm just going to create a one basic you know using these two single choice and multiple choice you can choose the number of questions so i'll just maybe say five to start with and then here's where you describe your quiz and this is the ai element of it so what it will do is take your description and then interpret that and create some quiz questions based on that. So I'll say, I want a quiz with questions that test the user's understanding of building healthy eating habits, because that's the, you know, the, the title of the topic. Um, and you could be more specific, specific here. You, know, you really want to drill down and, and give the AI as much information about what you want out of this quiz as possible. So you probably want to be giving it things like how difficult you want the quiz to be, because if you don't add anything like that, it, it might create some really basic questions. So you need to tailor this to your audience. So I'll say this should be aimed at those with an intermediate understanding of dieting and so something like that and um you know it's that's my prompt but you probably want to go a bit more in depth with that and then all we do is create questions here by clicking this button and this will now run so that's now communicating with open ai uh, and um it's passing that information to that and it will get back a series of questions and then it will build that quiz out of it so this might take a while, um, as I say, it's using the OpenAI API here, and sometimes that is quite slow at certain times of day. But it says here, success, the request has been successful process for the quiz, and we can click into that and see our quiz. So what it will do firstly is take us to the page here, but what I'm going to do is just open that, and then we can give this a go. So we'll start the quiz. And um, <laughs> so let's see if we can get these right. These are fairly basic by the sounds of things. But which of the following is a healthy protein source? Recommended servings of fruit and vegetables. Type of fat. Yeah, I'm going to try and get these right. So there is some interesting questions here so that is a question where all of the above are um, correct so it's, it, there is a few different approaches to questions which is interesting and um, a bit of humor as well um, in in the questions and um, so I imagine you know, as you tailor your prompts you know you're going to get different types of um, uh, types of types of quizzes so we can see here there's one that's got multiple choice um 
I mean, th- this is potentially a bit repetitive, but again, that's probably down to my my prompt that I gave it there. And I thought I chose five questions, but it seems to have added more than that. Um, it's giving me the same questions again by the looks of things here, which is interesting. Um, well, let's try and get through these. How's the snacks? All right, so we finished the quiz. It, it didn't have five questions and it, it did seem to repeat a few of them there, which was interesting, but um, you know, that might've just been a, a glitch, but we can see that, you know, I got most of these right. Um, oh, transfer, that was the one I was supposed to not have. Um, but yeah, these, it's, it's an interesting quiz. And yeah, you know, it's just interesting that it's been able to create that just from a prompt and automatically insert that into the course. So we can see that that's already placed in there and we can you know, get to that quiz and use it straight away. So that's the AI quiz builder. Let's take a look now at extending course access. So if you remember in the, I think it was version 4.7 of LearnDash, they introduced the ability to sell courses um, a bit like this. So you'd have start dates and end dates and you could have a limit to the number of places are available. And it allowed you to sort of create cohort based courses and have a you know, fixed number of people on them and you know, started and ended at certain times. And this is a good addition. But what you sometimes find if you're delivering courses is that people will sign up for a cohort, but they might not be able to finish it in time. You know, life gets in the way, doesn't it? And you know, they might not be able to finish in the same time as everyone else. And what LearnDash have added here is the option for you to extend access to certain people. So you could say this person's struggling to finish the course and therefore I'm going to give them an extension until you know September 2024 if you wanted. You know, so you, you, you're extending the course access for certain learners here. Um, it says you know, extend access for certain users. So that's just a feature which is quite useful if you find people who are struggling to fit into the, the cohorts that you've set up. And, you know, it, it sort of reduces the maintenance headache of taking them out and putting them into different cohorts and things like that. You know, so that's a, a good feature. And just taking a look at the groups options that they have now. This is very similar now to how courses work. So as you may know, you can buy access to LearnDash groups and you know in turn you would get access to all of the courses that the group gets access to and what learners have done in this update version 4.8 is added a way to limit the number of places in groups as well as set you know start and end dates for these so um, you know if I go back to this group here I can edit it and see that in settings, I have now got the option to set a start date for the group and an end date for the group and a student limit for the group. And not only that, but the extend access feature that is available as part of version 4.8 is also available here. So we can set expiration dates for certain groups um, or certain courses onto certain users. So yeah, that's all um, some great extra functionality that will help with the delivery of, of different types of courses. So there's some interesting updates there and they're really getting into this AI um, functionality as a lot of platforms are these days. And I think that the quiz builder AI is a step up from the course outline builder AI. I think there are you know, a lot more potential options to use that than the course builder. And even though there are a few glitches there, I'm sure they can be I and out and they may well be the, the settings that I had and you may you may well find that every time you generate it you get a different thing and it might have been a one-off that I had duplicate questions there. And some of these features around extending access are obviously from people who've raised this because this is a common thing that anyone who runs cohort basic courses will have experienced in the past. So they've obviously listened to uh, people 
who are delivering courses this way and created features to help them. So a useful update there. And um, if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe to the Spark YouTube channel.